Hi, Professor Baldwin here, and today we're going to talk about integer exponents. Integer exponents just mean that we have exponents which are not fractions. At the very top of the page, you have the properties of exponents, and I'm not going to go over these in detail, but we're going to reference them as we work through some of these examples. In the first set of examples, we need to simplify the expressions. Now, remember what an exponent means. It's telling you how many times to multiply that base by itself. Our first example, we have negative 2 to the power of 2, or negative 2 squared. Notice that the exponent is attached to the parentheses. That means everything inside the parentheses is what that exponent is applied to. Here, that would give us negative 2 times negative 2. We're multiplying that base, negative 2, by itself twice. And negative 2 times negative 2 is a positive 4. Now, in example 2, we have negative 2 squared again, but notice there's no parentheses. Therefore, that exponent is only applied to what it directly attaches to, the 2, not the negative. Remember that this could be written as negative 1 times 2 squared. See how the 2 is, of the exponent is only attached to the base 2? That would give us negative 1 times 2 squared, 4, or negative 1 times 4, which is negative 4. Now, in example 3, we start using some of these exponent rules, or properties of our exponents. Here we have negative 2 to the power of negative 2. Notice that our base here for the exponent is only 2. So it's really negative 1 times 2 to the power of negative 2. Therefore, we're only applying that negative exponent rule to that base of 2. We'll keep the negative 1. The base of 2 raised to a negative exponent tells you to put that base into the denominator and make the exponent positive. We can simplify this. We have negative 1 times 1 over 2 squared is 4, and negative 1 times 1 fourth is negative 1 fourth. Now in example 4, we have our negative 2 in parentheses. So that exponent of negative 2 is being applied to everything within the parentheses. And remember, the negative exponent tells you to take whatever is in the numerator and put it into the denominator, so negative 2, and we change our exponent to a positive. So we do this, the numerator stays as 1, and as we saw right above in example 1, negative 2 squared is a positive 4, so this simplifies to 1 fourth. Now in examples 5 and 6, we're changing our exponent from squared to cubed. So we need to multiply our base by itself three times. In number 5, we have negative 2 being cubed. Since negative 2 is in parentheses and the cubed is attached to those parentheses, we're multiplying the negative 2 by itself three times. These first two, negative 2 times negative 2, gives us a positive 4. And then we're going to multiply it by a negative 2 again, and we get negative 8. In example 6, we don't have parentheses, so that cubed is only attached to the 2, not the negative. Remember, this is negative 1 times 2 cubed. And we know that 2 cubed is 8. So we have negative 1 times 8, or negative 8. Okay, now let's look at some examples where we have variables. So we're going to use the same properties of exponents, just on our variables. In the first example, we have 1 over t to the power of negative 2. Well, we have a fraction, and I'm just going to assume that maybe we're going to end with a fraction. Remember that your negative exponent, in order to make it a positive exponent, whatever it's attached to changes positions. 
So above we saw a whole number and it had a negative exponent and that put that whole number into the denominator. Here we have a denominator with a negative exponent, so it's going to move to the numerator with a positive exponent. So this would be t squared over one, which simplifies to t squared. Now here in example two, this is similar to what we saw above in examples three and four, where we don't have a fraction to the negative exponent. So t to the negative four is telling us that t, which is in the numerator, right? This is the same as t over one that t is going to go to the denominator with a positive exponent. So this becomes 1 over t to the power of 4. Now let's throw in some more variables and even some constants. Now, as you've noticed, whenever I see that I have a negative exponent involved, I assume that I'm going to end up with some sort of fraction, so I draw my fraction bar. And then what I like to do is take it piece by piece and put them in their respective positions. So 11, the constant, doesn't have an exponent associated with it, so it's not going to change positions. It's going to stay as 11, and it's in the numerator. Next, we have t to the negative 4. Well, the negative is going to push the t into the denominator, and we're going to give it a positive exponent. And then we have u squared, not negative, so that is also going to stay in the numerator. And here we don't even have to simplify anymore, we just have 11 u squared over t to the fourth. Now let's look at example four. Again, I see that I have a negative exponent, so I'm going to draw that fraction bar. And then we'll go piece by piece. 11, no exponent attached, so it'll stay as 11 t to the power of 4, it's a positive exponent, so it can stay in its current position in the numerator. And then u to the power of negative 2. The negative exponent is going to move that to the denominator, and it's going to become a positive exponent. Okay, let's look at some more of our exponent properties. For these next four problems, we need to simplify. In Example one, notice that we have the product rule. Both of these have the same base, seven, so we can keep that base, and since they're being multiplied together, we can add their exponents. So we have seven to the power of 10 plus negative 13, or seven to the power of negative three. Well, now we have a negative exponent, so we know we're going to end up with a fraction, and 7 is going to go into the denominator and get a positive exponent. So 1 over 7 to the power of 3, or 1 over 7 cubed. And 7 cubed is 343. So this is 1 over 343. Now look at example 2. We have 2 to the power of 4 plus 2 to the power of negative 2. There's no exponent property that tells us how to add like bases. We only know how to multiply like bases. So here we have to actually calculate each of these parts. 2 to the power of 4 is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, or it's 16. And 2 to the power of negative 2 becomes a fraction. It's 1 over 2 squared. Right? That negative exponent property tells us to put the 2 into the denominator and change the exponent to a positive. Now we can simplify. We have 16 plus 1 over 2 squared, which is 4. And we can add these two together by getting a common denominator of 4. And 16 would be 84 fourths, right? We're going from 16 over 1 
And in order to get to four, we have to multiply by four. So we multiply the 16 by four, which is how we get the 84. And now that we have a common denominator, we can add these two fractions and we get 85 fourths. Okay, let's look at a couple more examples. Example three, we have some variables, M and N. Notice that we have a fraction and we also have negative exponents. So remember, I like to draw that fraction bar and then I go piece by piece. Let's start in the numerator with the first term, m to the negative one. m to the negative one, the negative exponent tells us to put m into the denominator, right? It changes positions. It was in the numerator, now it goes to the denominator and it gets a positive exponent of one. Remember one is always implied, so you don't really have to write m to the one, you could just write m. But we're gonna leave it m to the one for now and then eventually simplify. Next in the numerator, we have n cubed. Well, we can't do anything more with that, so we leave it in the numerator as n cubed. Now we move to the denominator. We have m to the fourth. That's gonna stay in the denominator as m to the fourth. And then we have n to the negative two. That negative exponent tells it to change position, so it's gonna go from the denominator to the numerator and it's gonna get a positive exponent of two. Now notice our numerator has only n's and our denominator has only m's, so we can use that product rule. So remember the product rule says when you have a like base, such as n, you're gonna add those exponents, three plus two. Likewise, with the denominator, the like base of m, we're gonna add those exponents of one and four, so we get n to the power of five over m to the power of five. Okay, let's look at problem four. Here we have a lot of different pieces and they're all inside the parentheses to a power of negative two. Let's use the power rule first to distribute that exponent of negative two to each of the pieces inside. We'll get negative six to the power of negative two, a to the negative two to the power of negative two, b cubed to the power of negative two, and c to the power of negative two. Now we can simplify piece by piece. Let's start with the negative six to the power of negative two. Well, that negative exponent tells us that the negative six needs to change positions and go to the denominator and get a positive exponent. Now, a to the negative two, then to the negative two, this is the power rule for products. So we're going to multiply these two exponents. So a to the negative two times negative two. So this is actually a to the four because it's a negative two times negative two. Then we have b, we have b cubed to the power of negative two. Use that power rule again and we get b to the negative six and we can leave our c to the negative two for now. Okay, now we can go through and use our negative exponent rule on our b and our c, and we can also simplify this fraction. We have one over negative six squared, which is negative six times negative six, or a positive 36. a to the fourth stays as is, b to the negative six, because of that negative exponent, becomes one over b to the positive six, and c to the power of negative two becomes one over c squared. Now that everything has a positive exponent, we can combine it all into one fraction. 
Now remember that a to the power 4 is the same as a to the power 4 over 1. So we can look everything in the numerator. We have 1 times a to the 4th times 1 times 1. So our numerator is just a to the 4th. And then our denominator, we have 36 b to the 6 c squared. Remember, just take these piece by piece and do one property at a time or deal with one part of the problem at a time and then slowly simplify. And then when you get more comfortable, you can combine a bunch of the steps together. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. And if you did, I hope that you will check out my other math videos for more help.